The rain fell in icy sheets as Samantha Ray climbed the granite steps of the funeral home, her black Louboutins clicking a mournful staccato rhythm against the stone. She paused under the looming portico, steeling herself for the onslaught of condolences and pitying looks that awaited inside. Pulling the collar of her black wool coat tighter against the biting wind, she thought bitterly that the weather was quite fitting for the occasion. Cold and bleak, just like the hollowness that had yawned open inside her the moment she got the call that her mother was dead. Dead. The word still didn't feel real. Samantha had spoken to her mother just last week, listening patiently as she prattled on about her garden club and the new recipes she was trying. There had been no indication, no warning that it would be the last time she'd hear that warm, lilting voice. A hot, hard knot lodged in Samantha's throat, and she swallowed against it. She wouldn't cry. Not here, not now. She was a top-notch attorney, known for her razor-sharp mind and unflappable demeanor in court. She would not come undone. Even if her world was crumbling to ash, straightening her spine, she pushed open the heavy oak doors, mentally girding herself. The cloying scent of lilies assaulted her immediately, so thick she could almost taste it. It mingled with the low murmur of hushed voices and the soft strains of organ music, grating against her every nerve. Then her gaze landed on the coffin at the far end of the room, and the air froze in her lungs. Samantha had been to countless funerals in this very room over the years, had arranged her father's herself right down to the gleaming mahogany casket. But nothing could have prepared her for seeing her own mother lying there amidst the satin and tulle, still and silent. A choked sound escaped her, and suddenly there was a hand at her elbow, steadying her. She glanced up into familiar gray-green eyes and her stomach swooped. Hello, Sammy, her stepbrother Nate, murmured. The childhood nickname sounded foreign on his lips now, in his deep, graveled voice. The voice of a man, not the gangly, mischievous boy she'd grown up with. Nate, she managed, faltering in her resolve not to cry. He looked devastating in his black suit, those intense eyes shining with shared grief. The same grief she'd heard when he called to tell her about the accident. How their mother had taken a fatal tumble down the stairs. How she died before the ambulance could even arrive. The idea of her mother, so poised and graceful, falling to her death didn't ring true. But the police had found nothing to suggest it wasn't just a horrific accident. Everyone, it seemed, was all too willing to believe that Diane Ray's death was nothing more than a tragic misfortune. Everyone that was, except Samantha. An icy trickle of suspicion skated down her spine as her gaze shifted to the willowy blonde draped over Nate's arm. Her stepsister, Vivian, dabbed daintily at her eyes with a lace-trimmed handkerchief, the very picture of the grieving daughter. But Samantha knew better. She'd seen the greedy gleam in Vivian's eyes when their mother announced she was revising her will. Samantha herself had urged Diane not to make any rash decisions, to reconsider effectively cutting Vivian out. The girl had always been troubled, selfish, and manipulative. But their mother had been determined to set things right, to finally address the damage brought on by years of Vivian's lie, schemes, and betrayals. And now, she was dead. And Vivian was playing the part of the devastated mourner to perfection. No, Samantha thought grimly as she met Vivian's red-rimmed gaze. She didn't believe for a second that her mother's death was an accident. And she wouldn't rest until she uncovered the truth even if the truth was more twisted and insidious than she could possibly imagine. Samantha's heels echoed on the marble floor as she strode into the foyer of her mother's sprawling Victorian home. The house was eerily silent, the air heavy with the scent of lemon furniture polish and wilting hothouse flowers. A far cry from the warmth and laughter that used to fill these halls when she was a girl. Before her father died, before Diane remarried, bringing Vivian and Nate into their lives. Before everything changed. Swallowing the bitter ache in her throat, Samantha made her way into the living room. Dust motes danced in the thin sunlight spilling through the lace curtains, making the space feel suspended in time. Like her mother might come sweeping in any moment, a vision in one of her tailored skirt suits, 
ready with a quip about Samantha working too hard. But the only sound was the ticking of the antique grandfather clock in the corner. The only movement, the lazy swirl of amber liquid in the cut crystal tumbler Samantha had poured herself from the bar. She took a deep swallow, relishing the familiar burn of her mother's favorite scotch. But even the alcohol couldn't chase away the chill that had settled deep in her bones, the unshakable sense that something was very, very wrong. Oh, good. You found them a Callan. Samantha stiffened at the sugary voice, turning to see Vivian glide into the room. Her stepsister looked like she'd stepped out of a fashion magazine in her black sheath dress and towering Jimmy Choo's. Not a platinum hair out of place. It's barely noon, Samantha said flatly. A bit early for cocktails, don't you think? Vivian's lips curved in a smile that didn't reach her eyes. Don't be such a prude, Sammy. If there were ever a day for day drinking, it's this one. She crossed to the bar, helping herself to a generous pour. Besides, it's what mother would have wanted. You know how she loved her single malts. Loved. Past. Tense. The word struck Samantha like a physical blow, and she tightened her grip on her glass. I'm surprised you came, she said coolly, watching Vivian settle herself on the Queen Anne sofa. Considering you and Mom weren't exactly on the best of terms. Something flashed in Vivian's eyes, there and gone too quickly to decipher. The papers are calling her death a terrible accident. I know better. And so do you. Samantha stilled. What's that supposed to mean? Vivian took a delicate sip of her scotch. Oh, come now. We both know Mother was far too graceful, too sure-footed to just tumble down the stairs like some feeble old woman. She leaned forward, dropping her voice to a stage whisper. I think someone pushed her. The air seemed to vanish from Samantha's lungs. It was the first time anyone had dared voice the suspicion writhing in her own gut. But hearing it from Vivian's lips made it suddenly, horrifyingly real. Who? She cleared the hoarseness from her throat. Who'd do something like that? Vivian rolled one silk-clad shoulder in a shrug. Who indeed? You're the hotshot lawyer, you tell me? Who stands to gain the most from our dear mother's untimely demise? Understanding slammed into Samantha, and she recoiled as if slapped. You can't possibly think I had something to do with. Did I say that? Vivian's smile was razor sharp. Interesting that your mind went there, though. Feeling guilty, are we? I'm not the one mother was about to cut out of the will, Samantha snapped. Vivian's eyes flashed again, colder than the ice clinking in her glass. Allegedly. But with mother gone, I guess we'll never know for certain. She drained her drink and rose fluidly to her feet. How? Convenient. Samantha opened her mouth, but before she could summon a scathing retort, Nate appeared in the doorway. His gaze darted warily between the two women, clearly sensing the crackling tension. What's going on in here? Vivian's demeanor transformed in an instant, her face crumpling as she flew into Nate's arms. Oh, darling. It's just so awful, rehashing everything. Nate stroked her hair soothingly, but his eyes found Samantha's over the top of Vivian's head. Hold, dine. Something passed between them, as palpable as the charge in the air before a lightning strike. He knew. He knew Vivian was up to something. But he was here, holding her, comforting her, playing a dutiful, doting fiancé, just as he'd done since the day he proposed. The day Samantha's heart had shattered like the antique mirror she'd hurled across her bedroom, unable to bear the sight of her own devastated reflection. She'd loved Nate for as long as she could remember. Had always assumed, somewhere in the deepest, most secret part of her heart, that they would end up together. Until that warm summer night on the back porch, the scent of honeysuckle thick in the air, when he'd taken her hands and uttered the words that haunted her still. I'm so sorry, Sam, but I can't do this. We can't do this. It's not right. You're my sister. But she wasn't. Not by blood. And those feelings, that soul-deep connection, that overwhelming rightness she felt in his presence, it couldn't be turned off like a tap, no matter how much they both might wish it. Now here they were, three years later, 
forced together by tragedy, by sins and secrets that ran thicker than blood ever could. Nate looked at her searchingly, and she felt flayed open. The urge to go to him, to bury her face in his chest, and breathe in his familiar scent. Sandalwood and the faintest hint of the cigars he indulged in far too often was a physical ache. But Vivian was there, watching her with those knowing, calculating eyes. So Samantha tamped down the longing, the hurt, locked it away, just as she'd done every day since Nate shattered her heart and then offered the shards to her stepsister instead. Tearing her gaze away, she set her glass down on the bar with a resolute clink. I need some air. Then she was moving, nearly sprinting from the room before the tears could fall. Nate watched her go, his own heart twisting painfully as Vivian's grip tightened on his arm. And high above the mantel, in an ornate silver frame, Diane Ray's portrait seemed to stare down at them all. Accusing. A warning from beyond the grave. Samantha's feet carried her blindly through the house, past the elegant dining room where her mother had hosted countless dinner parties, past the library with its towering shelves of leather-bound books. She didn't stop until she reached the conservatory, the glass-encased room that had been Diane's pride and joy. Sunlight streamed through the panes, bathing the riot of greenery and blooms in a soft golden glow. Orchids, her mother's favorite. They'd spent countless hours in here together, tending to the delicate plants, talking and laughing. It had been their sanctuary, their escape from the tensions and politics that always seemed to simmer just beneath the polished surface of their blended family. Now, as Samantha sank onto the wrought iron bench, she felt her mother's absence like a physical ache. The flowers seemed to wilt before her eyes, their colors fading, their vibrancy diminished. Or maybe that was just her vision, blurred by the hot tears she could no longer hold back. She buried her face in her hands, shoulders shaking with silent sobs. She couldn't remember the last time she'd allowed herself to cry like this. Great, heaving, gasping breaths that felt like they were tearing her apart from the inside out. She cried for her mother, for the gaping void her death had left in the fabric of their lives. She cried for herself for the little girl who'd already lost one parent and now faced a world without the steady compass of the other. And she cried for Nate, for the love they could never acknowledge, the future that had been ripped away before it could even begin. Oh, Sammy. She stiffened at the sound of his voice, hastily swiping at her cheeks as she raised her head. Nate stood in the doorway, his own eyes red-rimmed and raw with grief. Don't, she said hoarsely, holding up a hand as he took a step toward her. Don't call me that. You lost the right to call me that when you chose her. N Pain flickered across his face, and part of her rejoiced at the sight. Good. Let him hurt, as she was hurting. Let him feel even a fraction of the agony that had been her constant companion since the day he proposed to Vivian. I never wanted to hurt you, he said quietly, shoving his hands in his pockets. You have to know that. A brittle laugh escaped her. Well, you did a bang-up job of that, didn't you? Fuck, Nate. She's my stepsister. Your stepsister. Do you have any idea how messed up that is? He flinched, but held her gaze steadily. I know. Believe me, I know. But I? Uh, I'm down in the wish you will. I couldn't fight it anymore, Sam. The way I feel about her, it's wrong. It's so wrong. But it's there, and it's real, and I can't make it go away. Samantha closed her eyes, willing herself not to scream. Not to fly at him with fists and nails, to beat against his chest until the dull, throbbing pain in her own subsided. And the way you feel about me? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Is that still there? Is that still real? Silence stretched between them, taut and trembling. When she opened her eyes, Nate was watching her with an intensity that stole her breath. It never stopped, he said roughly. Not for a single second. God, Sam, I... I love you so fucking much, it terrifies me. It's like this living, breathing thing inside me, clawing to get out. I thought if I could just lock it away, if I could make myself stop, then maybe... Maybe what? 
she demanded, rising to her feet. Anger pulsed through her, hot and bright. Maybe we could go back to playing happy family? Maybe Vivian would stop being the manipulative bitch she's always been? Maybe our mom would magically come back to life? No, Nate snapped, his own temper sparking. But maybe I could stop feeling like a complete fraud every time I look at my fiancé. Maybe I could stop dreaming about my stepsister every fucking night, waking up hard and aching and hating myself. Maybe I could stop being so goddamn in love with you, it's eating me alive. The words hung in the air between them, raw and pulsing. Samantha stared at him, chest heaving, a roaring in her ears. And then she was moving, crossing the space between them in three quick strides. She crashed into him, her mouth finding his in a bruising kiss. Nate made a sound low in his throat, his arms coming around her, crushing her against him. He kissed her back just as fiercely, just as desperately, a tangle of teeth and tongues and searing, searching lips. It was wrong. It was so, so wrong. But God, it felt like coming home. Like every nerve ending in her body was singing in recognition, in exultation. Nate walked her backward until her spine hit the cold glass of the conservatory wall. His hands found her hips, fingers digging into the silk of her dress as he rolled his hips into hers. Samantha gasped into his mouth, lightning zinging through her blood at the feel of him, hard and insistent against her belly. We can't, she panted, even as her fingers fisted in his hair, anchoring his mouth to hers. Nate, we can't do this. I know. But he was hiking up her skirt, his palm skimming the lace edge of her stocking, higher, higher. I know, baby. But fuck, I need you. I need you so much. She was lost. Lost in the heat of his touch, the delicious friction as he ground against her, the filthy, perfect words falling from his lips. It would be so easy to surrender, to let him touch her, taste her, take her right here against the glass. The sound of shattering ceramic ripped through the charged air like a gunshot. They sprang apart, breathing hard, spinning toward the source of the noise. Vivian stood in the doorway, her face a mask of shock and fury. At her feet lay the shattered remains of one of Diane's prized orchid pots, soil and delicate roots spilling across the floor. You bitch! Vivian spat, zeroing in on Samantha with eyes like chips of ice. I knew it. I knew you couldn't keep your filthy hands off him. Samantha's heart was a jackhammer against her ribs, panic and guilt a noxious swirl in her gut. Viv, wait. But her stepsister was already turning on her heel, fleeing down the hall in a whirl of black silk and blonde hair. Samantha turned to Nate, stricken. Go after her, she urged, shoving at his chest. Nate, you have to go after her, you have to fix this. For a moment, he simply stared at her, his expression unreadable. Then, jaw tight, he turned and strode out of the conservatory without a backward glance, leaving Samantha alone amidst the broken pot shards and crushed flowers. A fitting tableau, she thought numbly, for the state of her life, of her heart. With shaking hands, she crouched down and began to gather the sharp pieces. If she focused on this, on the physical act of cleaning up this small destruction, maybe she could keep the larger implications at bay. The looming specter of just how thoroughly she'd fucked everything up. She had just dumped a handful of shards into a nearby waste bin when a glint of something pale amidst the dark soil caught her eye. Frowning, she leaned closer, brushing aside the dirt to reveal a scrap of paper. No, not paper. Heavier, with a glossy sheen photographic paper. With trembling fingers, Samantha lifted it out, smudging soil across the surface as she turned it over. As the image registered, she felt the breath leave her lungs in a dizzying rush. It was a photo of her mother. But, not, the elegant, perfectly coiffed Diane Ray, the world knew. No, this woman was rumpled, disheveled, mouth slack, eyes glassy and unfocused. And beneath her, just visible in the shadows. A pool of dark, glistening blood. Samantha stared at the photograph, her brain struggling to process what she was seeing. It was her mother, 
there was no doubt about that. But the image was all wrong, a grotesque mockery of the vibrant, put-together woman Diane had been. And the blood. Dear God, the blood. It seeped across the floor around her mother's prone form, a dark, glistening pool that made Samantha's stomach heave. This wasn't an accident. The photo in her shaking hands was proof of that. Someone had done this, had hurt her mother, had killed her. But who? And why? The question swirled in her mind, tangling with the shock and horror until she thought she might scream. She needed answers. She needed the truth. Staggering to her feet, she shoved the photo into her pocket with numb fingers. She couldn't trust anyone, not until she knew what she was dealing with. Not the police, who had been so quick to write off her mother's death as a tragic misfortune. Not Vivian, with her crocodile tears and simmering resentments. And not Nate. The thought made her heart twist painfully, but she ruthlessly pushed it down. Whatever was happening between them, whatever they felt for each other, it didn't change the fact that he was engaged to Vivian. That he had chosen Vivian. No, Samantha was on her own in this, as she had been in so many things for so long now. Squaring her shoulders, she strode out of the conservatory, leaving the shattered pot and crushed flowers in her wake. She needed to think, to plan her next move. And she couldn't do that here, amidst the suffocating memories and simmering tensions. She was halfway to the foyer when raised voices made her pause. Nate and Vivian, locked in a heated argument just out of sight. Samantha crept closer, straining to make out the words. Don't know what you think you saw, but it's not what it looked like, Nate was saying, his tone equal parts placating and frustrated. Spare me, Vivian spat. I know exactly what I saw. You, with your hands all over that little bitch. In our dead mother's house, for God's sake. Keep your voice down, Nate hissed. This isn't the time or the place. Oh, I think it's exactly the time and place, Vivian retorted. The perfect, dutiful son and the grieving stepdaughter finding comfort in each other's arms. It's like something out of a bad soap opera. Samantha's nails bit into her palms as she clenched her fists. The urge to storm in there, to scratch Vivian's eyes out for daring to speak about her mother, about Nate, in that scathing tone. But Nate's next words stopped her cold. You're one to talk, he said, low and fierce. Considering you're the reason our mother is dead. Silence. Horrible, ringing silence. Samantha's heart stuttered, then began to race. What did he mean? What did Nate know? I don't know what you're talking about, Vivian said finally, but there was a tremor in her voice, a crack in that icy facade. Don't you? Nate pressed. Then why have you been so jumpy since the funeral? Why were you burning papers in the fireplace last night when you thought everyone was asleep? Vivian made a sound, half laugh, half sob. You're delusional. Grief has made you paranoid, seeing things that aren't there. Oh, I'm seeing just fine, Nate said grimly. I'm seeing a woman who is terrified of being cut out of our mother's will. A woman who would do anything, even commit murder, to ensure that didn't happen. Murder? The word hung in the air, heavy and damning. Samantha pressed a hand to her mouth, feeling the room spin around her. Vivian Dutton. Nate suspected Vivian of killing their mother and from the rising hysteria in her stepsister's voice as she sputtered denials, he was hitting far too close to the mark. Samantha squeezed her eyes shut, trying to reconcile this new horrifying knowledge with the girl she'd grown up with. Vivian had always been troubled, manipulative, even cruel at times. But a murderer? Capable of taking her own mother's life in cold blood? And yet, it made a sickening sort of sense. The timing of Diane's death, just days after informing Samantha of her intention to revise the will. Vivian's too-perfect performance of the devastated daughter. The way she clung to Nate, using him as both shield and prop. God. God. Samantha pressed her forehead to the cool wood of the doorframe, feeling the clues slot into place like puzzle pieces. Vivian had motive. She had opportunity. 
and if that photo was any indication, she now had blood on her hands. The revelation left Samantha reeling, torn between shock and a grim, rising fury. Her mother was dead, murdered by the daughter she'd loved despite everything. And Samantha would be damned if she let Vivian get away with it. Mind racing, she crept back down the hall, careful to avoid the creaky floorboards. She needed proof, something concrete to take to the police. The photo was a start, but it wasn't enough, not on its own. She needed to search Vivian's room. If her stepsister was burning evidence, there had to be more. Clues that would lead to the how and the why of Diane's murder. Samantha was halfway up the stairs, heart pounding a staccato rhythm against her ribs, when a voice stopped her cold. Going somewhere, she spun, nearly losing her footing on the plush carpet runner. Vivian stood at the base of the stairs, arms crossed, a knowing smile playing about her lips. I... I was just... Samantha scrambled for an excuse, but her mind was blank, wiped clean by panic, and the simmering rage tightening her throat. Looking for something? Vivian tilted her head, blonde hair spilling over one shoulder. Or should I say, looking for proof of my supposed crimes? Ice slid down Samantha's spine. She knew. Somehow, Vivian knew that Samantha had overheard her confrontation with Nate. That she suspected the truth about their mother's death. I don't know what you're talking about, Samantha said, but the words sounded hollow, even to her own ears. Vivian laughed, a tinkling sound completely at odds with the malice sparking in her eyes. Oh, Sammy, you always were a terrible liar. She began to climb the stairs, each step deliberate, predatory, dotty line. Then, that's what I always liked about you. So honest. So predictable. Samantha backed up, nearly stumbling in her haste to put distance between them. Stay away from me, she warned, hating the tremor in her voice. I know what you did, Viv. I know you killed our mother. Vivian paused, head cocked. For a moment, Samantha thought she might deny it, might try to laugh it off as a wild accusation. But then her stepsister smiled, slow and sharp as a blade. Well, well, look who finally grew a spine. She continued her advance, until they were standing eye to eye on the landing. What are you going to do, Sammy? Run to the police with your wild theories and flimsy evidence? Samantha swallowed hard. They'll believe me, she said, with more conviction than she felt. They'll investigate. And they'll find out the truth. The truth? Vivian scoffed. The truth is, our mother was a cold, manipulative bitch who never loved anyone but herself. She got what she deserved. Shock rippled through Samantha, followed by a blinding surge of fury. Before she could think, before she could stop herself, she lashed out, slapping Vivian hard across the face. Her stepsister reeled back, hand flying to her reddening cheek. For a moment, she gaped at Samantha, stunned. Then, with a shriek of rage, she lunged. They went down in a tangle of limbs and hair, nails raking, fists flailing. Samantha barely felt the blows, the sharp sting of Vivian's nails gouging her skin. All she could feel was the white-hot anger, the grief and betrayal and simmering frustration boiling over into violence. She wouldn't let Vivian get away with this. She wouldn't let her mother's death go unavenged. She would fight, with every last breath in her body to see justice done. They were so intent on their vicious tussle, they almost didn't hear the sharp, splintering crack. Almost didn't feel the way the landing shuddered beneath them, the wood groaning in protest. Samantha had just a moment for confusion, for dawning horror, before the floor gave way. And then they were falling, tumbling through space amidst a rain of splintered wood and plaster dust. Samantha's scream echoed in the cavernous foyer, mingling with Vivian's terrified shrieks as they plummeted. The last thing Samantha saw before the darkness rushed up to claim her was Nate's horrified face, his arms outstretched as if to catch her. Then pain exploded through her head, her body. The world fractured, going gray at the edges. As unconsciousness dragged her under, one final thought chased her into the abyss. Diane. The photo. The dark, glassy eyes. The blood haloed around her head like a macabre crown. 
So much blood. Just like the blood she could feel, warm and wet, pooling beneath her own shattered body. Pain, Dottie. Blinding, searing, all-consuming pain. It was the first thing Samantha was aware of as she clawed her way back to consciousness. Every inch of her body felt bruised, battered, broken. She tried to move, to sit up, but the agony that lanced through her at even that small motion wrenched a cry from her throat. Easy, easy, easy. Don't try to move. Nate's voice, rough with fear and worry. His hands gentle on her shoulders, easing her back down onto a bed. Samantha blinked, trying to focus through the haze of pain. White walls, antiseptic smell, the beep and hum of machines. A hospital. She was in a hospital. Memory crashed over her in a dizzying wave. The conservatory. The photo. Vivian's taunts, her rage. The fight on the stairs. The sickening lurch as the landing gave way beneath them. Vivian, she croaked, her throat raw and aching. Where's Vivian? Nate's face swam into view above her, his eyes bloodshot and shadowed. She's here. In surgery. She. She's in bad shape, Sam. Samantha closed her eyes, a rush of conflicting emotions washing through her. Anger, fear, sorrow, and a grim and terrible satisfaction. Vivian had brought this on herself. Her lies, her schemes, her ruthless pursuit of their mother's fortune. It had all led to this. But the photo, the damning evidence of Diane's murder. Samantha's eyes flew open, a surge of panic giving her the strength to grasp at Nate's arm. The picture, she gasped out, in my pocket. Did they find it? The police? Nate frowned, confusion and concern battling across his face. What picture? Sam, what are you talking about? Frustration welled in her chest, hot and urgent. The photo of mom. The blood. It was in my pocket. I found it in the conservatory. Understanding dawned in Nate's eyes, followed swiftly by a look of such profound sorrow it stole Samantha's breath. Oh, Sam, he murmured, reaching out to stroke her hair with a trembling hand. There was no photo. The police searched the scene. They went through your clothes. There was nothing. No. No, that couldn't be right. Samantha shook her head, ignoring the wave of dizziness and nausea the motion provoked. It was there, she insisted, her voice rising in desperation. I had proof, Nate. Proof that Vivian killed our mother. Nate's hand stilled, his expression going carefully blank. Vivian didn't kill anyone, Sam. The police ruled Mom's death an accident. You know that. Samantha stared at him, a cold, creeping dread unfurling in her gut. You don't believe me, she whispered, the realization hitting her like a physical blow. You think I'm crazy. Delusional. Pain flickered in Nate's eyes. I think you're grieving, he said carefully. I think the stress of mom's death, of the funeral, of everything between us. I think it's taking a toll. Samantha yanked her hand from his grasp, ignoring the hurt that flashed across his face. I know what I saw, she gritted out and I know your precious fiancé is a cold-blooded killer. Anger sparked in Nate's gaze, hot and defensive. Stop it, Sam. Just stop. Vivian is a lot of things, but she's not a murderer. Isn't she? Samantha pushed herself up on her elbows, gritting her teeth against the scream of protest from her battered body. Then why was she burning evidence the night after the funeral? Why has she been so jumpy, so defensive? Why did she attack me on the goddamn stairs? Because she's scared. Nate burst out, surging to his feet. He raked a hand through his hair, pacing the small confines of the hospital room like a caged animal. She's terrified of losing everything. Her home, her inheritance, her family. And can you blame her? The way you've been dogging her every step, throwing around wild accusations. Samantha gaped at him a bitter, disbelieving laugh bubbling up her aching throat. I can't believe this. You're actually defending her. 
After everything she's done. And what about what we've done? Nate snapped, whirling to face her. His eyes were bright, anguished. The way we've lied and snuck around, betraying the people we're supposed to love? We're not exactly innocent in all this, Sam. Samantha flinched as if he'd slapped her. Shame and guilt curdled in her stomach, warring with the righteous fury pounding in her veins. That's, that's not fair, she whispered. What's between us? It's not the same. Nate's shoulders slumped, the fight draining out of him as swiftly as it had come. Isn't it? He asked tiredly. We've been selfish, Sam. We've put our own desires above everything and everyone else. And look where it's gotten us. He gestured around the sterile hospital room at her bruised and broken body in the bed. At the machines monitoring Vivian's fading life down the hall. This has to stop, he said, and there was a finality in his tone that made Samantha's heart seize. We can't keep doing this. We're destroying ourselves and everyone around us. Panic clawed at Samantha's throat, sudden and suffocating. She knew what he was going to say, even before the words left his mouth. Knew it in the grim set of his jaw, the resolve hardening his eyes. I'm sorry, Sam, but I can't do this anymore. Nate's voice cracked, but he pushed on ruthlessly. Whatever this is between us, it ends now. It has to. Samantha shook her head frantically, tears blurring her vision. No? No, Nate, please. But he was already backing away, his expression a mask of misery and regret. I have to go. Vivian, she needs me. It was like a knife to the chest. Samantha watched, mute and numb, as Nate turned and walked out the door. Out of her room. Out of her life. She didn't know how long she lay there, staring blankly at the ceiling as silent tears coursed down her face. The pain in her body was nothing, a distant ache compared to the yawning chasm that had opened in her heart. Nate was gone. He had chosen Vivian, even after everything. Even with the truth staring him in the face, he had still chosen the lie. And with his choice, he had ripped away the last scraps of Samantha's hope, her purpose. Without him, without the driving need for justice, for vengeance, what was left? The answer came to her slowly, rising from the ashes of her shattered world like a dark, terrible phoenix. Retribution. Vivian had taken everything from her, her mother, her family, her love. And if the law wouldn't hold her accountable, Samantha would. A plan began to take shape in her mind, cold and crystalline. The pain receded, replaced by a numb, icy focus. She would need to be smart, careful. She couldn't afford any more mistakes, any reckless confrontations. But in the end, Vivian would pay. One way or another, there would be a reckoning. The door to her room swung open and Samantha stiffened, half expecting to see Nate returning, unwilling to leave things as they had. But it wasn't Nate who stepped through the door his footsteps soft on the linoleum. It was Harold, her stepfather, the man who had been conspicuously absent since the moment of Diane's death. He closed the door behind him with a quiet snick, the sound echoing like a gunshot in the sudden, ringing silence. When he turned to face her, his eyes were dark, fathomless. In his hand, he held a small crumpled square of photo paper. Samantha's heart stuttered, then began to race. The missing photo. The evidence. But how? I believe this belongs to you, Harold said softly. He extended the photo, his hand steady. And I think it's time we had a talk, about my daughter, and what really happened to your mother. The rain fell in soft, susurrating sheets, beating on the dark marble of the headstone like glistening tears. Samantha stood before it, heedless of the water soaking through her black coat, plastering her hair to her face and neck. Her eyes traced the words etched into the stone, the dates that bookended a life cut so abruptly, so brutally short. Diane Elaine Ray. Beloved mother. Daughter Tarn. Friend. Beloved. Samantha's lips twisted in a humorless smile. If only her mother had known just how beloved she truly was. If only she had seen the dark currents of obsession and desperation 
lurking beneath the placid surface of their family life. Perhaps then, she would still be alive. Samantha closed her eyes, the events of the past few weeks playing out behind her lids in a grim, relentless loop. Harold's revelation in the hospital room, the sordid truth spilling from his lips in fits and starts. Vivian, it seemed, was not the only one with blood on her hands. Harold's tale was one of love turned twisted, perverse. Of a forbidden desire for his stepdaughter, nurtured in secret over long years. He had watched Vivian grow from child to woman, his obsession deepening with each passing day. Until Diane, in a moment of brutal clarity, had seen the truth, had recognized the sick, covetous hunger in her husband's eyes when he looked at her daughter. She had confronted him, threatened to expose his perversion, to cut him out of her life and fortune for good. And in a moment of blind panic, of animal desperation, Harold had snapped. Samantha could still hear his voice, hollow and distant as he recounted that fateful night. The argument that turned vicious, violent. The heavy crystal vase snatched up in a rage-fueled grip. The sickening crack as it connected with Diane's skull. The choked gurgle as she crumpled to the blood-spattered carpet. In the end, it wasn't evidence that damned him. It was guilt, heavy and cankerous, eating him alive from the inside out. He had thought framing Vivian would alleviate it. Would shift the burden of his sin onto her slender shoulders. But Vivian, for all her faults, was no killer and watching her pay the price for his crime, watching Samantha tear herself apart in pursuit of a truth that had nothing to do with her stepsister. It had broken something in him. Some last, fragile thread of sanity and self-preservation. And so he had come to Samantha, the photo clutched in his shaking hand. A confession. A plea. Justice, in the end, was both swifter and more merciful than he deserved. A trial? A guilty verdict. A sentence that would see him live out the remainder of his days behind bars, with nothing but the specter of his crimes for company. As for Vivian, fate, it seemed, had a cruel sense of irony. The fall down the stairs, the same method Harold had used to dispatch her mother, had left her broken in body and spirit. The doctors said she might never walk again, might never fully regain her faculties. Nate, true to his word, remained by her side. A dutiful fiancé, a steadfast support. Whatever he and Samantha had shared, whatever dark, desperate passion had sparked between them, it was ashes now, cold and dead. Just like everything else in Samantha's life, she opened her eyes, staring down at the damp, dark earth of her mother's grave. She had thought the truth would bring her peace. That justice would cauterize the bleeding wound of her loss, her betrayal. But as she stood there, the rain mingling with the hot, bitter tears on her cheeks, all she felt was empty. Hollowed out, scoured clean by the cruel machinations of fate and circumstance. She had no family now. No love. No anchor to tether her to the world, to her own humanity. All she had was the cold, hard kernel of her own resilience the unyielding bedrock of her will. It would have to be enough. Drawing in a shuddering breath, Samantha laid the single white rose she'd brought atop the wet marble of the headstone. A final tribute. A farewell. Then, squaring her shoulders beneath the sodden weight of her coat, she turned and walked away. Away from the grave. From the memories. From the ashes of her old life. And into the uncertainty of the new. The rain continued to fall, soft and steady, washing away tears, washing away blood, washing away everything, until all that remained was the promise of a new dawn, bleak and unknowable, waiting just beyond the horizon, a whisper in the dark, a story yet unwritten, Samantha's story, one she would wrest from the cruel, grasping hands of fate and make her own.